In this video, I'll be walking you through adapting a project to 8.5 by 11 paper from start to finish. The example I'll be using is our blooming bag. The original design would be impossible to cut on 8.5 by 11 paper because certain elements simply won't fit, but we can downsize the project to make it fit. The end result will be a bit smaller, but will still be beautiful and practical. So here is a photo of the original design, and it's still going to come out looking exactly the same. Of course, yours is going to be different depending on the pattern papers and colors you choose, but it's just going to be a little bit smaller. So I'm going to close that. Here is the project unzipped. We're going to go into the SVG folder and double click on it. This is one of the older ones, so we do not have an all in one. And I'm going to select all of the SVGs. I have my shortcuts sure lot already opened, and I'm going to drag and drop these onto the mat. And it takes a few seconds, but they will all load in one fell swoop. You don't have to do one at a time. And I can close that. So what I'm going to do here, first thing I'm going to do is change my mat size just to make things easier for me to observe. Okay, so here under the document settings, I'm going to click where it says 12 by 12 and simply change that to 8.5 by 11. So that's going to shrink the mat size down. Okay, I'm going to zoom out a little bit, and down here on the bottom left, we're at about 69%. I'm going to zoom out a little bit more, just to give myself a little wiggle room. And I'm going to start taking these and sort of isolating them, moving them around the mat. You don't have to keep things on the mat. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so the first thing I notice here is this. Obviously, this piece alone fits just fine. Okay, so I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to hide it just to get it out of the way. I can click on this little eyeball to hide it. That one's done. We'll consider that one done. This piece, this piece is uh, AC Lagoon. It's a cardstock piece. Obviously, it fits within the 8.5 by 11 confines. Close that one or just hide it, get it out of the way. This is a gold foil piece obviously fits. I can hide it. I can see it here. Now one other thing too that you need to understand uh, while you're doing this, especially if you have a Cricut machine, let me show you something real quick here. In Cricut, what I've done to illustrate this is I've, I brought in a square. And the square, I'm going to size it to 8.5 because you would think that something 8.5 inches you'd be able to cut on your Cricut on 8.5 by 11 paper. Well, that is not the case because design space requires a little bit of a buffer. So if I hit make and I try to change my material size to 8.5 by 11, it's not available. The image is actually still too large even though it's exactly 8.5. I'm going to cancel this and what I discovered was that you can't have anything larger than 8 inches wide if you want to cut it on 8.5 by 11 paper. So now if I click make under material size here you can see that 8.5 by 11 is now an option and here is the little bit of buffer. You cannot move it left or right. It needs to keep that little buffer area and that's just that's just the, the way design space is. So we have to keep that in mind when we're working in sure cuts a lot. So what I need to do at this point is look at all these pieces and figure out are any of them even after I break them apart and separate them are any of them going to be larger than 8 inches? Okay, so this one clearly, if I put it on this mat here, this is 8.5 right here. So 8 is at this point here. This will fit just fine width-wise. We're going to have to separate these, but width-wise they're fine. Each of these little elements, they're not going to be a problem at all. They can all fit. Essentially what we need to do is look at the largest piece of the pie. Or of the project in this case. Now I can tell that this rectangle here is going to be fine, this overlay is going to be fine, but the main part of our bag here, even if I isolate it, and let's try to rotate it. So to rotate it, simply click on it and grab this little handle. If you just rotate it, it'll rotate smoothly at one degree increments, but if you hold down the shift key, while you rotate it, it'll rotate in about, I think, 15 degree increments. Okay, and now you can see here that 
this won't even fit at eight and a half, this part up to the handle here, which means that we need to downsize this so that this is no wider than eight inches. Okay, now here's where it gets kind of tricky. Not really, but when we downsize this to eight, if we just downsize this to eight, then everything else won't fit. So we have to downsize everything all together, okay? The first thing we need to do before we start breaking all these things apart is downsize the entire project to make sure that the largest piece will fit. I'm gonna take this and put it back to its original orientation. Now one way of doing this is by highlighting this piece here, going under Object, and then selecting Transform, and hitting Scale, okay? And what I wanna do here, yours might be automatically set to Dimensions. I'm gonna change this to Percentage, and let's make this 80%. So I'm just changing the width to 80, and I'm gonna hit Apply, and then I'm gonna hit OK. Now I'm gonna rotate this, and let's take a look and see, okay? It looks like that's well within the eight inch mark, which is right here. So we can technically, we can undo this. If we hit undo, it'll rotate it back. And that was at 80%. So we go here, we can hit scale again. And let's go to 85, hit apply, okay. Let's rotate it, I'm holding down my shift. And even that looks like it still fits, okay. So let's undo that. Let's try 90%. Highlight it, go to Object, Transform, Scale, 90%. Apply, OK. Let's rotate it. And that is getting pretty darn close, but that will fit, OK? So we can make this project at 90%. All right, so I'm gonna undo this, get it back to its original size, Let's reveal all those little pieces that we hid by clicking the little eyeball here under layers. So now we have everything visible. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to edit, select all, we're gonna go to object, transform, scale, and we're gonna change all of the widths to 90% of their width and hit apply. So that took, and shrank everything down by 10%, okay? So now, of course, these are all still gonna fit. They're just 10% smaller, so we can hide those for now. And let's take another look at this one. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit so we can see. And you can see here that that will fit. That's within the eight. You can see the eight inch mark there. And then here, obviously, it does not go all the way down to the 11, so we're in good shape. Now, the only other issue at this point is that, well, we have to separate these. Okay, so we're going to do that here in a second. Let's take a look at this file. Now that we shrank this one down 10%, this one fits perfectly. We don't need to do anything to this one at all, so we can hide that one. So we're just left with these three, possibly, maybe not. Let's rotate this one and see if this one will fit. Okay, so this one here, it looks like this goes just slightly beyond the 8-inch mark. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this, I'm going to right-click and copy, and I'm going to right-click and paste, and I'm just duplicating this, okay? Now, obviously, this piece here is the only one that won't fit among this collection here. So here's what we'll do. We'll grab our eraser tool. And I'm going to erase away all of the pieces except for the one that doesn't fit. Okay, now we have it here isolated. And then on this one, we'll erase this piece. Okay. And now we can take and rotate this, and it'll fit on here within the 8 inch mark. Okay, I can then select. All of these elements, actually we don't even need to do that, that's fine. What we can do at this point is just hide all of these. We know that these are gonna fit, and that just leaves these two guys, okay? 
So now this one here, this is not gonna fit all together, obviously. So I'm gonna put this over here just to get it out of the way. We're gonna right click on this and copy. And then we're gonna right click on the mat or anywhere around the mat and hit paste to duplicate this. What we need to do here is isolate this piece and then isolate these pieces, okay? So here's what we'll do. We're gonna zoom in just to get nice and close. And I'm gonna grab my eraser tool and I'm gonna actually change this to the square tool so that I don't accidentally erase parts that I don't want to erase. Okay, so this is gonna go. I'm using my little jog wheel on my mouse to move the mat up and down. And now it is isolated. Now here's another quick way to tell whether or not you've got it right. If I click on this and I go here to this little arrow, this position and size, you can see that the width is 7.876, well within the eight inch requirement. Okay, so I know this piece is gonna fit. And let's zoom out. And now since we have this piece here, we still need these two pieces, so we'll just erase away this one. Okay, just get up close there and zoom in. Just make sure that you don't have any weird stray little pieces. Okay, so we've taken and isolated this. Now, this is kind of wonky here. Okay, so with this, I'm gonna actually do the same thing here because we wanna save paper as well. So I'm gonna copy and paste this part. And on one of these, we'll erase the rectangle. And on the other one, we'll erase the little handle overlay. And now we have these isolated. And of course, you can rotate that as well. Pop that right there. However you want to optimize your paper, you can do that. Now we can highlight both of these, right click, and group them together so they stay together. And now we have this one and this one, and they'll both fit within that eight inch requirement. Okay, this one fits perfectly. So we can take and hide that, and we can hide that, and that just leaves one more piece here. And this one's very similar to the one that we just did. Okay, so what I'm gonna do again is right click and copy, and we're gonna duplicate this piece, right click and then paste. Okay, and I'm going to erase the bag on this one. The bag's gonna have to be by itself. And then the other two elements will be on their own as well. So let's erase this. There we go. So these elements are now separated. And like we did before, to help save even more paper, let's go ahead and duplicate this again. Copy, paste, and on one of them, we can erase the rectangle, and on the other one, the overlay for the handle. And let's move that out of the way. Let's check out our positioning here. We can rotate this using that handle. We'll pop that up here, grab this one, rotate it, and there we go draw, I'm just clicking here anywhere, away from these two shapes, click and hold and drag a box around both of these, right click and group, and there we have it. And that just leaves the bag. So we'll grab our eraser tool from over here. You can zoom in by clicking this little button here down at the bottom left. And all that's left to do now is erase these elements so that we only leave the main structure of the bag. There we go. And again, if we grab our selection tool, click on it, and take a look at our position and size section here, you can see again, the width is 7.876, which is well within eight inches. And now we have all of our pieces. So here's what we can do. It doesn't matter how you do this, you can We'll turn these back on now, because if they're turned off and you save the file, it will not, it's not gonna bring them across. 
Okay, so we can just put these all on top of each other. It doesn't really matter. And now we're going to go to File, Export. And I'm going to save this to the desktop. I'm going to call this Bloom Bag 8 by 11. And hit Save. Make sure that I have Design Space Compatible selected. Hit OK. And now let's go into Design Space. I'm going to upload, browse image. Now here's my Bloom Bag 8.5 by 11.svg. There it is. Let's continue and upload. Okay. And now what we need to do is just right click, ungroup, and we have all of our files here. I just want to show you that they all came through. And when you highlight them here, it actually shows you the dimensions. Okay. Now it's 10 inches tall, which is well within the confines. Everything looks great. The last step here is to go through and just attach any of the files that have score marks which is typical anytime you're working with designs that have score marks or markers. Just go through and attach all them by highlighting them and clicking the attach button. And now, got everything, almost everything attached. That doesn't need to be attached, nor does that. Good, so we can hit make. And you'll see here, we change our paper to eight and a half by 11. That will fit. That'll fit. These are the biggest ones here. So it remembered that I wanted 8.5 by 11 on those, on that color anyway. That obviously will fit. That'll fit. So on and so forth. Looks like everything is going to fit on eight and a half by 11. So this is wonderful for those of you that have specialty papers that only came in eight and a half by 11, or especially our, our friends over the pond or across the pond that don't have as much access to the variety of papers that we do here in the States.